Okay, so next we're going to talk about the stress calculator, which is um, where we enter the details for the loads that we want to calculate, or we want the program to calculate. So let's take, for example, um, if you look first, if you look down to the nine and seven eighths tie back um, and liner, we pre-populated this with the loads that was requested um, based on the um, spreadsheet that we got. So here's the spreadsheet that's been used to create these. Um, this is also stored in the same area with, the, with these um, demo files on the FTP site. And so we looked at the nine and seven eighths tie back um, and the tube. So we don't have any loads built yet for say the 16 inch line. So what we can do is I'll show you how to build some loads. So you click, click add new loads. So there's um, three different load types. There's a pre-installation load, there's an installation load, which can only be a single installation load, which is the initial condition. And then there's all the post-installation -in loads. The pre-installation loads are the loads that could occur before the casing is set up, before the cement is set, which would include overpull, running in hole, and bump and cement plug. Then we've got the installation load, which is the initial condition, and then everything else is post-installation. These are the standard load cases that uh, we have in the program. These are all blade load cases. These are the load cases that we teach on our introduction to case and design and advanced case and design courses. If needed, we can take um, a company's case and design manual, and we have done this for um, one of the companies in the area. And we've taken all of the, their loads from the case and design manual, put them here um, as extra options down here. So they can just click them and very easily create what needs to be created specific to their company. So I normally start with the initial condition. Um, I like to rename this as cemented. That's a user's discretion. So the initial condition for this liner, it will automatically populate all of our boxes and tabs here. Um, if the box is white, it's editable. If the box is gray, it's not editable. Um, it will pull these pressures based on what it sees here as the fluid density when that string was run. But if we wanted to change this for whatever reason, say we'd switch the fluid out just before we ran something, then we'd need to change this. If we did change this, the program lets us know that it's not a default. There's a couple of ways we can change it back. We could delete it and then just press tab, and then it goes back to default. Um, or we could just uh, restore defaults from up here. Um, but that's not useful if we've changed a couple of things. Say we only wanted to restore one of the values back, delete it, press tab, and we're going to restore all the defaults here. Um, it by default just has a tail cement job, but if I was to change something here, I could easily add a, pit, add a lead in. Oh, it went the wrong way, my bad. Okay, so put the top of cement of the tail further down. So now we've defined the top of cement previously in our case and design over here. So now we've got space for this lead. So we've got, now got a 200 foot lead cement um, with tail behind it. And uh, during this initial condition, we can set a uh, temperature profile if we want. So all temperature profiles available come from our thermal analysis module up here, which we will speak about in one or two videos time. I'm not gonna confuse things by switching over. Finally, um, the, no, not finally, apologies. The temperature profile here, um, whatever we do select is shown in the string temperature. So this would be default. Um, if I wanted to show a custom temp, let's see what this is. We could then enter in our custom temperature details. If we had modeled a thermal profile and something else, and we wanted to include it inside string analysis, we just paste it in here. I know this is an installation load case, so we wouldn't have production at the time, but I just want to show you um, what the string temperature would look like if we had imported one of the thermal profiles that the program itself has calculated. But I'm just going to stick with undisturbed temperature, which is more than likely going to be the situation when the string is set. Finally, the annular fluid density um, for each of the sections, we can decide what is on the outside. It's going to take this default of, of uh, the 12.7 that we have here. If you want to change something, you can easily change it there. I'm going to click OK. It's created this initial condition. It's installation load type. If I wanted to change it, I would select. I could select the drop down menu here, but it's not going to let me change it because the initial condition is an installation load case. So then I could go ahead and maybe add my pre installation load case as my overpull. Um, this is going to model 100,000 pounds overpull here. Set your sticking point. Sticking point is most, uh, normally run as the 
most extreme point, the TD of that section, because um, you'd want to model, okay, what if we got stuck an inch or a few inches above where we're supposed to set it? Um, we can model it here. Um, we've got coefficient of frictions. If you have numbers that suit your needs better, you can change them here. And again, we can add in a temperature profile if we want. If we did want to add in some notes, we can do it on this screen. Um, so this is user specified over pull applied at the case and shoe with string on bottom. And I might want to say that this is 100,000 um, pounds. Additionally, we have a little bit of a profile note here. You'll see where the profile note sits when we come to stress results next. But the profile notes give you a written English description of what is going on. So if you're sitting and meeting and engineers are discussing what assumptions were made during this load, then in plain English, it tells you exactly what assumptions have been made. So the internal pressure is a 12-7 fluid density. External pressure, we've got the hanger pressure, um, which is 4839 in this instance. Then we've got the 12-7 behind. Temperature we've used undisturbed. If we wanted to look at further details of any of any load cases, we can click the view details load case. What this does is it displays internal and external pressure lines. Here we've got 12.7 on the outside for both internal and external pressure. So we can't see the difference here that the lines are sitting on top of each other. You may notice that all of these boxes in a standard load case are grayed out. So that means they're not editable. If we were, however, to create a custom load case, these boxes now become white, which means we can edit them. When we build custom load cases, we can either create it from scratch, so I could just sit here and type in some depth, so I could read off here, okay, at this depth here, I wanna include this, and this is the pressure, and that's the density that I'm gonna have on the backside. Additionally, I can create a custom profile, a custom load, sorry, um, from a template, either from the templates of the standard load cases we have or from an existing load case. So I could take that initial condition, pull in the data, and then just change something. If I just wanted to run the sensitivity of maybe it's reducing the pressure here or adding an APB on the backside to see how APB would affect a load case, uh, let's say I wanted to add a thousand PSI on here. Um, I know I wouldn't do this for a initial condition load case. I'm just showing you the process we would go through, 5839, I've added my 1,000 PSI, we'll add 1,000 PSI all the way down the um, back side of the case. And, and now we can see our internal and external pressure lines. For all figures like this in the program, you can right click and copy the image and just paste it into Excel, Word, whatever um, you're busy using at the time. Finally, we've got our temperature here, and then we can import temperatures. Um, we can import internal pressures or external pressures, um, but mainly use this import function to import some sort of temperature. Um, could import temperatures data from Excel, or more than likely, I'm just going to use the thermal simulator results and then import that thermal. So if I import something that hasn't been run yet, it'll ask me, do I want to run it? I click yes, the program calculates it. That load was already built. The thermal load was already built in thermal analysis, pulls it across, and now I have this new temperature profile here. Notes, this is where I would make myself a note of what this load is actually doing. I'd give it a better name than custom load, um, so I can distinguish between different loads. And finally, the profile notes, as we discussed earlier. Because it's a custom load case, we can't create these profile notes just on a whim because we don't know what the user's doing. So the user has to come in for a custom load and enter in what the internal and external pressures were. I think it was built from the same case we had before, which was like a 12, 7, pound per gallon fluid etc and then i'd say my external pressure is whatever with the fluid behind and what temperature to use i think just we, this would either be undisturbed or whatever temperature just imported here i think it was maybe the well kill temperature we imported you would then say something like well i'm not going to save this because it's just a made up load case it has no pertinence to this project um I mentioned before that the sidekick is easily accessible at all times. So I already have my sidekick sitting on the right-hand side of my screen here, but if I didn't have it, I could click it here, reloads the sidekick, and then I could look at the details because I wouldn't, while inside this box, I can't reach this sidekick button here, so we've included it here. Close that one down. I don't want to save the changes, no. Um, and I can just lock my sidekick to the side of the screen here. So what I will do is I will go down and build all of these load cases. Um, 
There's a lot of different load cases. I'm not going to go through them all in detail now because I know you don't want to sit here. This is we talk for an hour and a half about all the different load cases. So feel free to free to experiment. Um, go down, build a bunch of different load cases, and if anyone needs help with building any load cases or want specifics on what a load case does and doesn't quite understand, then feel free to drop me an email. And that is my email address there. It's plumley at blade-energy.com. Okay. We'll now move on from stress calculator and look at the stress results. I don't think there's anything I want to include here. Um, but if it is, we might jump back to it later on. 